What is up guys, Team Eagles here with another video and uh, today we're going to be taking a look at one of my personal favorite decks and that is Phantom Knights. For the current meta, this is definitely considered to be one of the better decks in the format, uh, definitely within the top five. Uh, I, I think this deck is extremely powerful and very difficult to beat because even when you clear their board, they can still manage to somehow extend back into other plays, which is absolutely crazy that this deck can do that. And obviously, it, uh, it's very simple to play, in my opinion. Obviously, there are some unique lines of play, but I think it's pretty uh, pretty easy to run with. But before we jump into the deck profile itself, if you guys are not subscribed, already uh, go ahead and smash that subscribe button and turn the notification bell on because if you do that then you get notified when i upload cool and awesome videos just like the one you're watching and it'll also help me get to a thousand subscribers which we are quickly approaching uh we're at 941 i think at the time of recording which is fantastic and obviously while you guys are at it give the video a thumbs up because it's always appreciated i love seeing those thumbs up it makes me happy but without further ado let's take a look at this week's deck profile Alrighty, so Phantom Knights, uh, wh what a deck. How do I even start with an introduction for this deck? I I've been playing this deck since it came out back in 2016. Uh, the deck is very, very fun. It's always been enjoyable, and it's probably at its best currently that it's ever been in its entire existence. This deck just does so many cool things and pushes so hard with some really amazing plays. So let's go ahead and start with the Phantom Knight lineup in which we are playing, of course, three Torn Scales because this is the best Phantom Knight main deck monster in the game currently. Uh, this card really just made the deck ridiculous. Like this card, it's, it's an extender, it's a dump, which is even crazier. Um, and it's a discard, like uh, literally three things that Phantom Knights want. This card does all of them, which is just ridiculous. Such a good card. Uh, really, really powerful. Probably the, the second best normal summon in the deck next to uh, Tour Guide, obviously. Then we have three Phantom Knights of Silent Boots. So Silent Boots is an extender, which is fantastic. It also searches for your spells or traps. Um, in our case, it's just traps because we don't play the bad cards, which are the spells. We just go ahead and we stick to the trap cards. Obviously, if you're playing a more budget list and you don't want to pick up certain things for the extra deck, then yes, I would recommend playing the rank up spells. But if you do have the money to kind of just throw it whatever extra deck monsters you need then by all means necessary just play the trap cards don't play the rank up spells um but an extender and a search is really another card that the phantom knight strategy utilizes excellently now moving on to the uh the two of that we play that is two cloak now for a very long time i played three of this card i thought three was completely necessary and now looking at it i don't think you need three anymore i think you can get away with playing two i think two is perfectly acceptable and uh it, it doesn't harm you like consistency wise like all of it is perfectly fine and it still functions perfectly well you don't necessarily want to open cloak but you're definitely going to use his effect a decent amount throughout the course of the game so you're going to want to have two of him in your deck the uh also i want to mention that the the attack boost can come up it doesn't come up as often as some people may think but I mean, there are some situations where, sure, you could potentially give Appaloosa an extra 800 attack because, like, you have a Verte that changes the Appaloosa to be um, a Dark, and then you could summon this out and then give Appaloosa basically another negation. But that's very, very rare that that happens. It, it can happen, but it's not super, super common. Then the one of, so we play one Ragged Glove and one Stained Greaves. So the Ragged Glove, I feel probably needs less explanation because the the ragged glove itself i think for one you don't want to play multiple of it it's just the card that you really want to dump from deck you don't always want to see this card in your opening hand it doesn't do a lot in your opening hand so you might as well just uh keep it in your deck and send it off of your card effects um but the dumping effect that it has by banishing itself is really, really good because you could either send a Phantom Knight monster or you could send one of the traps to go ahead and extend even further, which could be extremely helpful just arriving stuff from the graveyard. Um, so there are some, some obvious impl implications with that. But the Stained Greaves, I feel this card is really, really powerful, but a lot of times I feel this card almost misses the mark. Like, I love the card. I think it's fantastic. But there are so many times where I look at it and I'm like, man, I'm like, I wish... I wish this card just had more to it. Um, that being said, it can make a, a Time Thief Redoer fairly easily, which that, I will give credit, 
is a fantastic part of why this card should be played. Like that, 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 that itself is a great reason to be playing this card because Redoer in this deck puts in so much work. So keep in mind, I think that playing one of each of these is perfectly acceptable. I don't think you need to play multiple. If you're gonna play multiple of any, play a second Ragged Gloves, but still, like I said, one in one is perfectly fine in my opinion. Um, but that is the Phantom Knight lineup. We're gonna go ahead and jump on to, um, I guess we'll call this the, the Burning Abyss lineup. I guess that's what we'll call it. Uh, we have three copies of Tour Guide, one copy of Graph, and one copy of Seer. So the Tour Guide's um, pretty obvious as to why we'd be playing those. Opening Tour Guide is basically full combo in this deck, which is disgusting. Um, you just normal the Tour Guide, summon the Graph, and then when the Graph and the Tour Guide get linked for a Cherubini, the Graph summons the Seer. You can send a Phantom Knight off of your Cherubini, and then you link the Seer and the Cherubini for a Rusty Bardish, and then the Seer brings back your Cherubini, which then gives you simple and easy access to something like Appalooza, with just two more summons so keep in mind that is the reason the tour guide is so good um if you draw either of these yes it could be a pain in the butt like it's i i totally get it but even if you do draw one of them it's not the end of the world you want to draw seer less than you want to draw graph because if you open up tour guide and graph at least with opening tour guide and graph you could just summon the graph from hand off the tour guide um if you open the seer it just kind of hurts like it's it just, it just hurts there's no other way around it um it's just a pain in the butt to deal with at that point but um you know there, there are worse things that could happen you have plenty of extenders in the deck to allow you to keep playing uh, one of those extenders is three copies of Kage Mucha Knight. So Kage Mucha Knight plus Tour Guide is great because then they can't ash your Tour Guide. Um, that's actually super beneficial, even though currently we are seeing a very large influx of people playing cards um, such as like Infinite and Permanence to play around the fact that, you know, cards like Triple Tactics Talent exist or like Ash, like you don't have to worry about getting ash now you have to worry about getting hit with an imperm which kind of is unfortunate but that's that's the name of the game currently uh people don't want their opponent to resolve a triple tactics talent so people opted to go for more cards like infinite impermanence or just going second cards which you guys are going to see uh in this deck profile but kage mucha knight does help you extend and play through hand traps so that's actually very important then I'm going to show the last four extenders all uh, at the same time because it's just single copies of all of them. We have one Psychic Wielder, one Psychic Tracker, one Danger Suchinoko, and one Danger Jackalope. So I think that these are all good as one of I Obviously, the Danger Engine, you can't play them at more than one. Um, uh, an upcoming ban list in the beginning of 2022 could obviously change that. Uh, and we could end up seeing these cards go to multiples. If that's the case, I don't know what I would change up ratio wise, but I felt that playing one and one is obviously the, the route to go because they are level three monsters that help you extend and they discard a card from your hand, which in a lot of situations can be extremely helpful. And then for the wielder and the tracker, let's say you open up a tour guide and one of these, but you don't open up like a Kage Mucha Knight and you norm your, normal your tour guide, you activate the effect and your opponent ashes it, that's fine because then you can just special one of these and then continue with your combo. So keep in mind something like that is actually very, very important because it helps you play around hand traps too. You, you wanna play around as many hand traps as possible and uh, this deck definitely has access to doing so. Then for the, uh, I'm sorry, we do have one last extender or starter. Uh, I, I completely forgot about it. It was hiding behind some other cards and that is one copy of Junk Forward. Um, card's really, really good. I, I think you just need one of it. I don't think there's a reason to play multiple. A lot of the extenders, like you, extenders, whatever you want to consider them, um, just as one ofs, like just these five one ofs, it's more than enough to, to get you there and uh, really help your plays speed forward. But moving on to the last monsters that we play in the deck, which I'm actually going to show with some spells because I think it's important to show them with the spells, is one copy of Destiny Hero Celestial, one copy of Destiny Hero Dasher, and three copies of Fusion Destiny. So obviously, as many people know, this engine is becoming more and more popular, and for good reason. This engine is fantastic. It does so much work for the deck, 
and being able to pop your own cards and pop your opponent's cards and then recur your phoenix enforcer is kind of crazy like that's <laughs> that's just really disgusting that the deck does that and obviously there are other implications in this deck too that i think we should point out in that of destiny hero dasher's special summon ability um if you draw a monster you can show it to your opponent special summon it um during your your draw phase obviously like that's just really really good um and then obviously the celestial effect to banish itself in the dasher to draw two cards that's also absolutely ridiculous and crazy um obviously you can't have any cards in hand for it which is fine you, that you you can go ahead and kind of blow your hand out and not worry about it and then draw two cards for free like that's just really really good so this whole engine is really really powerful um i really enjoy playing it and it definitely puts in some work against the rest of the meta moving on to the spells though uh, this is something that I mentioned before about going second cards. We do main deck three Forbidden Droplet. Now, if you are someone who is trying to save some money and you don't want to drop like $450 or whatever the price tag is now, um, at least $300, I know that's the minimum, uh, to pick up a play set of Droplets, you could play something like Forbidden Chalice. That's more than acceptable. If you want to play Forbidden Chalice, it'll save you a whole lot of money if you're a budget player. Um, but the droplets for me are fantastic or if you want to even play dark ruler you can play dark ruler that's that's another viable option um but for me i have the droplets i play the droplets and i think they're fantastic being able to load my graveyard up with phantom knight cards in addition to shut my opponent's board off is just fantastic then the last three spells that we play ooh, i just dropped one of them uh we play one foolish burial one reinforcement of the army and one call by the grave um so the Foolish Burial is obviously an extender. It helps you kind of unbrick bricky hands. It's just an overall good card. Like there, there's nothing about this card that I ever complain about because I just think the card does exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, I think the card is just a, a great card to play. Like I, I don't know how to describe how great Foolish Burial is in a deck that relies on the graveyard. It's, it's just great. It does what it does. Uh, the Rota is obviously great in Phantom Knights because you can search any of your Phantom Knights or if you have some situations where you open up, uh, and I'll give this as an example, let's say you open up like Junk Forward and Psychic Tracker and you also open, um, you just got to grab another card or two, you open like Torn Scales and then obviously you have blank cards um so let's say you open up you know like these five cards you open up uh the tracker the forward the scales and two random cards like or you open up rota and you not the junk forward or not the scales whatever the case may be um basically you want junk forward and a tracker or a wielder you can special summon the forward special summon the tracker and now you haven't committed to your normal summon but you still have your full combo which is crazy because if your opponent abuses you you could still do your normal summon afterwards so keep in mind that like you're your normal summon is actually um not always used in this deck which is fantastic like that's actually super super powerful uh so keep in mind that there are ways that you can really just play around your opponent's hand traps and uh not even worry about it and reinforcement of the army can definitely do that for you then the call by the grave also plays around hand traps and other things um obviously as we know phoenix enforcer is a card that people try and out as quickly as possible and call by definitely does that called by will uh will out that card very quickly which is fantastic just make sure that you do it um before they try and like special summon it back because that would not be uh that great because it'll probably hit the board before you can even call by it so um lastly one thing i want to point out because uh, this is just stupid stuff that people always comment on videos when i use uh my secret rare rota people are like oh it's speed duel you can't use speed duel cards in normal Yu-Gi-Oh. Uh, yes you can you can use speed duel cards in normal Yu-Gi-Oh. you cannot use normal Yu-Gi-Oh cards in speed duel it's the other way around from what people say they're always like oh you can't use the secret rota you're gonna get dq'd no no no. you can you just can't use your other rotas in speed duel um it can only be speed duel rotas being used in speed duel but you can use a speed duel rota in normal tcg Yu-Gi-Oh. i figured i'd point that out because some people just do not comprehend that and they really don't understand it and then i'm left uh commenting and getting into uh little keyboard wars with with idiots that's what we'll call them we'll call them idiots um <laughs> but moving on to the trap lineup i do play three copies of infinite impermanence because as we all know we don't want to you know go ahead and get smacked by a talents like that's just not fun we don't want to lose cards in our hand which is why i'm main decking the three imperm and the three droplet it just gets the job done and uh helps me go ahead and counter my opponent's board so imperm all the way in my opinion obviously if you go first you can set it too and if you set it then you can shut off 
one of your opponent's columns, which is actually uh, ridiculous that you can do that. So keep in mind that's actually a fantastic part. Then for the Phantom Knight Traps, I play three Fog Blade and one Shade Brigandine. Now, I feel like the, the thing that I always liked to do was play one of um, the other one. I can't remember what it's called. I think I have it uh, sitting over on the side here. Yeah, I do. I'll grab it. I'll put it on the frame so you guys can see. Because I have played this card in the past, and it is Phantom Knight's Sword. Um, the reason that I was playing this card, and I'm not playing it now, uh, I played it because you can boost your Appalooza by 800, and then you can have another negation, which is really good. Also, the fact that you can banish it from Grave to Summon a Phantom Knight is pretty cool. So if you want to play one of this card, you can, if you're trying to, like, save some money and you want a budget option. Because these are, like, quarters, if that. Like, um, if you're just trying to save money and, and get certain cards for the deck, by all means, go for it. Uh, so, and then the Brigadine, uh, it's a level four, so it helps you go into, uh, your Time Thief Redoer alongside your Stained Greaves, so keep in mind that that's actually, uh, a pretty important play, and then it gives your Redoer a trap, which is a bounce, uh, so that's actually really good too, but that is the main deck, it is 41 cards, I did not want to play 40, the Junk Forward was the 41st card, and I think it's fully worth it, I, I wouldn't change it up at all. Um, let's go ahead and jump on over to our extra deck and take a look. All right, so now we're moving on to the extra deck. Before I go ahead and show off the extra deck, I want to give a shout out to my locals, Imperial Gaming and Collectibles. These are their sleeves that they had custom made. Um, I always double sleeve my extra deck, as many people know, because I like to keep my extra deck cards super, super safe. But shout outs to them. They are hands down the best locals in all of New England, if not all of the East Coast. If you have not played at their locals before and uh, you think you're a good player, then you should come play at their locals. That way we can prove to you that that, uh, we are the best locals around and your locals just isn't as competitive as ours but before uh, we go ahead and jump into all this I also want to give a nice shout out to the um, second portion of the sleeve and I'm going to show the first card um, but the KMC character guards I love these I love these character guards they're absolutely fantastic uh, super cool borders and designs you could either have it on the front or the back whatever you prefer I'll show it to you guys as to how it looks um, if you put it on the back of the card rather than on the front I personally don't like having it on the back um, so that's how it looks like that and then on the back you could have the design out like that um, whatever your guys personal preferences I prefer to have the, the border on the front of the card though that way it looks like this but first card of the extra deck is our phantom knight's break sword we only play one of it i don't think you need to play more than one um there is one card in here that i will discuss as to whether or not i would change it and what i would change it for but right now i think playing the card that i have in here is slightly better obviously it's a just a personal opinion but a lot of testing will go into this so keep in mind that's that's a large part of what i do break sword however does have some amazing amazing applications in this deck if you summon it to his own that your rusty bardish points to obviously that's a pop and then his own effect is another pop and then you can summon two phantom knights back overlay them and make like a time thief redoer that's very very strong um there's just a lot of things that go go into this card and make this card fantastic and i i really can't praise this card enough it's just super super strong and it's a 2k beater 2000 and attack points can actually be a lot in some cases then we play one copy of levier the sea dragon um i think many people just know that this card is ridiculously good in this deck you, you just get to recur one of your phantom knight cards i thought about playing a second one but the extra deck is so tight now that it's nearly impossible to squeeze a second one in so i just opted to to play the one and i think playing the one is perfectly fine then, as we've mentioned a few times in the video, we do play the one copy of Time Thief Redoer. This card is super, super underrated, in my opinion, in the entirety of Yu-Gi-Oh! I think this is one of the best rank four cards to come out for the game in a very long time. Like, this, this card just does so much. And the fact that it has three different effects that, depending on your matchup, can all sway the game in your advantage is even crazier. So, Redoer is a fantastic card, fantastic one of. It's the only... Um, rank four that i play that you're going to be making with like your rusty bardish or your phantom knight monsters then we do play one copy of downward magician um the downward magician is primarily there for when you swing with the break sword or something like that and then main phase two you stack the uh 
downer magician on top of the break sword so you can make our good trusty friend Zeus. Uh, so as many people know, the Zeus is just a super powerful card. Like this card is insane, absolutely insane. It's just a board wipe that you can probably trigger multiple times. Uh, like since the release of this card, I've honestly wanted to play any deck that plays this card. Any deck that doesn't, I, I almost consider not playing it just because of how good Zeus is, which is why you guys see me so much play so much Burning Abyss because I can play this card in Burning Abyss all the time. Um, card's just really, really good. And alongside the Downward Magician, it's just another material that you could possibly send. Um, moving on to an engine that I think we already know I'm playing because I showed it in the main deck, and that is the DP engine. We play the one Phoenix Enforcer and the one Verte. Um, Obviously, you don't need to play multiples of either of these. That goes without saying. It is an expensive engine to be playing right now. Keep in mind, to be playing this engine, you're going to be paying um, probably close to $200 to get the Phoenix Enforcer. If you want three Fusion Destiny, that's also going to rack it up. And then the Dasher, the Celestial, and the Verte. Um, it, it's an expensive engine. It's a very expensive engine, but it's fully worth it. Absolutely worth it. And as I mentioned before, you can use the Verte to make... Uh, cards on the field dark which is actually pretty cool uh that kind of helped you out in some scenarios so uh the dp engine definitely an important part of the deck now the next card i'm going to show you guys is the card that i was mentioning before that uh, that you can swap out and that is one copy of link spider so here's my my thought process behind this because there's a lot that went into considering this card and why i want to play this card and i'm going to give you one of the options of a substitute first that you could play instead so the substitute that I always consider is one copy of number 49, Fortune Tune. So Fortune Tune helps you really go into a Zeus play if you have to make a Zeus play, which is ridiculous. Like that's super, super strong. However, the, the advantage to playing the Link Spider over the uh, Fortune Tune is that the Link Spider, you can go ahead and summon after your opponent hits you with Nibiru, and then you link the Nibiru token for Link Spider. And then if you have a monster in Grave that you want to summon back, uh, or that you can summon back, or even from hand, you can go ahead and do that, and you can link them off for a Verte, and then you can just make your DPE engine live, which is really, really powerful. So the Link Spider, in my opinion, is better uh, than the Fortune Tune, but to each their own, I would not be upset with either being played i just personally am playing the link spider right now uh next up a card that we all knew was going to be in here our copy of cherubini i i just think that this card really helps out a lot because it sends for cost it does not send as an effect so like your opponent can't ash the dump um you have no idea how many times i've activated the effect and people have tried to ash it or veil it or impermanent and i'm like okay i'm like that's fine but i'm still i'm still dumping and uh they really get frustrated about that like and this card is just too good so cherubini fantastic card can't uh can't brag about it more the next card that we have, which I think most people would understand why, is Artifact Dagda. Some people may be confused because they didn't see art, any artifacts in the main deck. Well, don't worry. We will get to that in the side deck. Um, this is with the DP engine that you're basically going to make this card go off. So keep in mind, this is actually uh, a pretty crazy part about this. Uh, then the last link two that we play is one copy of Mascarena because why wouldn't we play Mascarena? This card's really good. Uh, there are some times where you can end them like a Verte and a Mascarena, and then during your opponent's turn, you can Mascarena into an Appaloosa uh, alongside having like back row, the Rusty, and the DPE. So keep in mind the Mascarena is actually uh, super powerful. Then link three, uh, we play two link threes. One of them is our Nightmare Unicorn which uh, can't come up. This card definitely can come up sometimes. You'll have just a, a stray monster on the board and you have to out a card in your opponent's field and you have like the Mascarena with a, a stray and then you just go ahead and you make the Unicorn or other times you can just go ahead and start the turn or the game off if you're going second by uh, making Unicorn and spinning a card and then hopefully having another card that we can go to your access code. Um, unicorn is just a very versatile card. I, I can't really, I can't praise it enough. It's just a really solid card. Then lastly, for the rank threes, or the link threes, I should say, we have our Rusty Bardish, which I think, of course, everyone knows we would play this card in Phantom Knights. I don't know why we wouldn't. Uh, the card is very, very, very powerful, and it puts in a whole lot of work. 
uh, to be able to put cards into your graveyard from your deck and then set your Phantom Knight traps from deck. Like, that's just nuts, being able to send your Phantom Knights and then set one of the traps. Like, if you can set a Brigandine and you have, like, a Stained Greaves in hand, you have a free Time Thief Redoer. Like, that's that's crazy. That's really, really crazy. Its pop effect is also fantastic, too, if you summon the Dark Xyz Monster to zone it points to. Um, that's just really, really good. Like, this card is nuts. Absolutely nuts. I love it. Then the rank fours, one of them we, well, actually, we talked about both of them, so I might as well show them at the same time. We have our Appaloosa and our access code. So the Appaloosa, I think most people understand that negating monster effects in a pretty monster-heavy format is important. So the Appaloosa will come up a lot and definitely put in a crap ton of work for you. It's just, it's a card where even if you get to resolve one negation, it may be enough to make your opponent not have any further plays in the game, which is absolutely fantastic. And then the access code talker, I think we all also understand how powerful this card is. And for budget players, they can be a little bit happier because the card is slightly cheaper with the re release of Maximum Gold El Dorado because now you can get access code as a gold rare rather than a secret rare. And the secret rares, I think at their peak, were like $170 or $180, which is crazy. Um, so it, when people say, oh, well, you know, the Maximum Gold version is still kind of pricey. Well, look at how the secret rare was before and then... Uh, then you don't have to worry about <laughs> worry about that big of a price. Uh, so that basically rounds up the extra deck. I'm gonna go ahead and hop on over to the side deck and showcase you guys exactly how we counter the meta for like games two and three. Alrighty, so now we're on to the last portion of the deck profile, which is going to be our side deck. And I think that the side deck has a pretty good overall. Um, array of matchups that it's good against i i feel that i've kind of catered this to counter most of the meta some of it is generic removal some of it is obviously um specific towards certain decks but let's go ahead and take a little peek at what we play now starting off you did see the top card of the side deck which is two copies of Gadarla. this card is fantastic against a bunch of decks um right now the two that you're going to keep in mind are probably going to be the the uh, ones that pop to mind first are Fluanderies and Tri Brigade. You can out the Storm Barrier, uh, which is very, very powerful. That card is kind of a, a big damper on our strategy, so we got to get rid of it as quickly as possible. And uh, like that just helps out a lot. And that's, you know, that can be Tri Brigade or Fluanderies, but then you can like out M Pen with this card too, which is really good. Uh, additionally, indirect decks that it does hit would be something like Drytron. You contribute their Herald of Ultimateness, which does cut them off from being to negate you a bunch of times. So keep in mind that is actually one of the uh, important important pieces to playing Gadarla. Now, the next part is something that many people would already expect, seeing I said I was going to discuss it, and that is two copies of Artifact Lancia and one copy of Artifact Scythe. So the Scythe lock is obviously very, very strong and puts in a whole lot of work against a very large chunk of the meta right now, um, you know, because almost everything is extra deck reliant. So having the Scythe is very, very strong and uh, kind of just cuts people off from even attempting to play the game. So having that Scythe there is definitely worth it. As for the Lancia, the Lancia can be good against Tri Brigade. It can be good against Invoked, a bunch of other decks. Like I, I can't sit here and say that it's infinitely better against one deck or another because there are a lot of decks that this card does hit. So keep in mind, Lancia can put in a lot of work. And if you can set it off of the Dagda, that's even better. That's, that's just really even better. So the small artifact engine is fully worth playing. And then the next few cards are literally all just going second cards. So we have three Dark Ruler No More for those boards that we have to shut off. The Dark Ruler obviously puts in a significant amount of work when it comes to shutting off your opponent's monster's effects. They're basically not going to be able to do anything, which is extremely strong. So the Dark Ruler is fully worth playing if you want to go ahead and beat combo decks. Then the rest is backer removal. We have two copies of Twin Twister and two copies of Lightning Storm. The Lightning Storm, however, can be used against... Um, generic boards you know it could be used against monster boards you could try and drop it against like a tenny board and see what happens um so i feel that the lightning storm isn't exclusively for back row but it definitely can be for back row if you need it to uh that's kind of a nice card about the card nice thing about the card is that it does so many different things and then lastly we have three copies of evenly which can be for back row can be for 
uh, standard boards too, but obviously it's gonna be primarily there for back row. That way you can go ahead and get rid of any pesky cards. If you open up evenly against something like Fuanderies or Tri Brigade, like they basically just cry. Um, like evenly is such a good card against Tri Brigade. They're either gonna leave the Revolt or the Appaloosa, and then you can play through either one of those. So like uh, e evenly just wins you games. It really just wins you games. But that essentially concludes the entirety of the Phantom Knight deck profile for this week's video. It's a very, very powerful deck. Like I said, I would put it within the top five, maybe even the top three decks currently right now. It's being played a lot and for good reason. It just does a whole lot against the meta and uh, is very difficult to out. So keep in mind, if you're looking for a deck that is definitely in the higher tier of things, Phantom Knights is up there and it sure is powerful. I really love it and I'm gonna keep playing in it for quite a while so hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up as i mentioned at the beginning of the video make sure you go ahead and subscribe as well and smash that uh notification bell in addition to smashing the subscribe button that way you know when i upload more cool and awesome content and i will see you guys in the next video thanks for watching and this is team yugi fails signing out